is your boy DJ WG in the building once again for another edition of uh, the Down the Middle Show on another Saturday. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, all the time for your party for your like I said. My partner in crime is MIA. Not sure exactly where he is, but nonetheless, I'm not alone. Of course, we have the Queen of Sports. One of the most beautiful persons I've ever worked with. I say that with no apology, whether looks or otherwise. I'm speaking of none other than the lady that gives you the wave from Mondays to Fridays. I'm speaking of none other than. Oh. The creature is around. Mr. Jazzy Smith is around. Okay, sir. No worries. I'll hit you up soon. But anyways, before I got distracted, I am honored to have once again the beautiful Kennedy. Mm. Good evening. Hey, what an introduction. <laughs> <laughs> what an introduction, absolutely love it. Just a bit of a correction there. I bring the wave every single Monday to Saturday, actually. So, yeah, we, we go through the entire week, actually. Even over the weekends, we bring the wave. Indeed, indeed, indeed. How are you, my dear? I am fantastic. I am awesome. I'm amazing. And it's good to be back on Down the Middle. How are you? Um, I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it, is it, has it been that hectic? Indeed, 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 indeed. But of course, uh, before we go any further, let's do this. Lindelof. Expansive in finding Rashford. Now it's Dallow. And Garnacho! Yes, indeed. Once you hear that, you know what time it is. It is, of course, the football roundup. With, of course, the queen of sports. And what do you have for us this evening, my dear? Oh, man, I, lo I love the name, the football roundup. That, that is just so beautiful, you know. That's exactly what we do each and every single Saturday right here on Down the Middle. And, uh, you know, uh, DJ Double G just gives us that, gives us that platform um, to actually just, you know, give you um, everything in terms of football that has been going on during the week. And, you know, we've got a lot to catch up on. So without um, any further ado, let's just get into it because there's a, there's a lot that we need to catch up on. And we're going to be kicking it off with South African football, uh, the PSL. So um, as we announced a couple of weeks ago, Betway is the new sponsor of uh, the PSL. However, the season was actually supposed to kick off uh, last weekend. But due to the fact that the sponsorship deal was signed quite late the season will only kick off in September particularly or specifically rather the 12th of September that is exactly when uh, the Bedway um, sponsorship uh, season will actually kick off for the PSL however in the meantime they actually um you know, thought about it very well. I think this was a clever move and, you know, just to keep the fans entertained, you know, because around this time, it is football season. This is definitely when um, the leagues actually kick off. They were quite smart about this and they thought that, you know, let us put one of the tournaments um, to go ahead first while, um, you know, we we close up this Betway sponsorship deal. You know, we sign on the dotted line and they have actually... Um, put the MTN Age tournament to go ahead first. Now, um, usually in South Africa, the MTN Age tournament actually kicks off around September, October. The, that is the exact time um, 
that tournament actually kicks off. But this time around, due to the Bad Way sponsorship being signed quite late, they thought of uh, they thought of the M10 8 tournament to just kick off early. So it kicked off last weekend, and yeah, it was a thriller match that kicked off the tournament with Orlando Pirates versus Super Sport United. Um, just you know, you looking at the highlights of that game, it went down, and when I mean it went down, it was a thriller of a match. Orlando Pirates are bringing the heat this season and teams do need to look out for them because, wow, they are, they are on the attack. They are really just, um, they have they have focus, you know. They are quite determined, and they know exactly what they're looking for. Now, um, Orlando Pirates are two-time defending um, champions of this tournament. They won it um, in the 2021-2022 season, and then they also won it in the 2022, um, excuse me, 2022-2023 season. And also now they're defending it in the 2024-2025 season. So uh, they are the defending champions, and you know they kicked of their tournament on a very good note. Um, in the quarterfinals, it was Orlando Paris versus Super Sports United, and they won that match 3 1 um, with the first goal coming through um, in the first 90 minutes of the match. You know, Super Sport reacting to that, um, to that mistake that they made and just bringing one back, pulling one back to make it all even, which was 1-1. They went into extra time because someone actually has to be knocked out uh, and one will only go to the semifinals. And so um, they did go to extra time. And within this extra time, Orlando Pirates banged in two more goals to make it 3-1. And that's exactly how Super Sport United were knocked out of this tournament. Another match that was actually on the cards as well was Stellenbosch FC versus is Galaxy. Now, I did speak about Stellenbosch FC a couple of weeks ago of what we could expect um, in this year or this season's um, PSL. And Stellenbosch FC are a team to be on the lookout for. They are quite dangerous, they are quite technical, and they are quite smart um, when it comes to outplaying their opponents. And honestly, um, in this fixture, they did just that. Now, TS Galaxy did get a red card, so they were already on the disadvantage vantage with only 10 men on the on the field and you know what um Stellenbosch FC actually took advantage of that and that is exactly how they were able to bang three goals to one against TS Galaxy. Now a match that also came through today as well was between Sikukune United and Cape Town City and that match ended in a 1-0 affair with Cape Town City going through to the semi-finals of the MTN 8. Now tomorrow there's only one match and that is between Mamelodi and Bologna City, which will be played um, at the Loftus Fastfeld um, Stadium out in Pretoria. So, um, great match to be looking out for. That that game actually kicks off at 3 p.m. South African Standard Time. So, um, if you are a fan, you're gonna be heading out to to the stadium to support your favorite team. That game kicks off at three o'clock. So, you might want to be there uh, nice and early. But it is going to be a thriller of a match. Um, Sundowns, of course, being eluded by this one. Um, by this one league cup um, in this tournament, you know, uh, they haven't, they don't really have a good track record when it comes to the MTN 8 and the season around. They are going to be looking to actually bring that heat and secure their place in the semi finals. Now, the MTN 8 um, does have two legs of the semi finals, with one being home and the other one being away. So um, I'm guessing after this match tomorrow um, at the stadium, the semi final fixtures will be announced announced which will probably be played um in the next coming weeks. Woo how do you do this? <laughs> I could actually sit here for the next two hours listening to you running, 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 running. <laughs> it's for the love of this no, beautiful no, no, game no, we no, call no. Now I, un now I understand exactly why you are self-proclaimed the queen of sports. Exactly. <laughs> right. 
so uh, it's for the love of this beautiful game um football you know it, it unites everyone it brings everyone together and honestly it's just one of those um sports that you know really just put you at the edge of your seat because you know um, many fans actually do take this um this this sport you know to heart and you just see all these these fans who are uh, supporting their favorite teams you know when they lose the emotion when they're not winning when they're missing the goals and when, when they're missing the opportunities the emotion that goes into the fans and you know i'm just you know the thorough preparation that the coach needs to make for um you know the matches and just just preparing the team overall, it, it, it's quite extensive. And yeah, you know, it's, it's just for the love of, of this beautiful sport. All right. Um, <clears throat> let's uh, fly into England for a second. Um, yeah. Of course, uh, the EPL starts this, well, next weekend. Um, yeah. And uh, there is a lot to look forward to. With, of course, uh, um, if my memory serves me right, um, Manchester City, um, yeah, taking taking the title for the twenty twenty three twenty twenty four season. <clears throat> um, yeah, of course, uh, the currently as I speak, the transfer window is still opened, and of course we'll get yeah. um we'll 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 get uh, into that. In, in in subsequent uh, programs, uh, but yes. uh, but what exactly are you looking for or forward to, as it regards to the 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 the, the, the um, firstly the uh, English Premier League? Do you think Manchester City can 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 go back to back? First of all, Ooh. um, you know what. They would definitely want to do it again. I think Pep Guardiola would definitely want to do it again. His marches would certainly want to do it again. I mean, they did want to do it um, in the previous season, the 2023-2024 um, season. They wanted to literally um, go back-to-back -back with the treble. Of course, they won the... Um, they won the the EPL League, they won the UEFA Champions League, and they won the FA Cup. And they wanted to do it again in the 2023-2024 season, but unfortunately, um, being knocked out in the semifinals of the UEFA Champions League and, you know, losing in the final of the FA Cup as well. And the only cup they actually walked away with was the EPL. So, definitely, in hindsight, Pep Guardiola is looking to redeem himself. You know, he's definitely looking to to um, get his uh, boys ready to actually compete and hopefully, hopefully this season um, go back to back. But you do have the likes of Arsenal who were really, really just literally a hand away from lifting the EPL League last season and uh, Man City coming in and sneak sneaking and snatching it away from them. So Arsenal is another team to look out for. Um, in the season, you know, um, we know what they can do. We know their potential. You know, um, you know, they, they they have shown that they are a force to. They are not a force to be reckoned with. Uh, you know, they have shown that they do. They do play football, and when they mean business, they really actually do mean mean business. You know, so it's going to be quite a very interesting um, contest this time around to see. I mean, the top three, we're probably going to be looking at Arsenal, Man City, Arsenal again. You know, maybe top five, um, Man City, Arsenal, Liverpool, Tottenham. Um, perhaps Man United sneaking in into that top I, five I, as I, well, I, you I, know. I, 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 I was just about to fly to Pretoria for you. Because oh I was, really? Because I was wondering, where do you see Manchester United? Not because I'm I'm trying to be as professional as I can here, listeners. Yeah. But yeah. For the past couple of seasons, Manchester United has not been looking like the Manchester United when, for example, uh, uh, um, the special one. Who, who, who we all know. Yeah. Um. Um. I'm yes. speaking of Jose Mourinho, or 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 or, yes. the, or, 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 or the king himself. I'm speaking of uh, yes. uh, 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 the man uh, 
uh, who 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 quote unquote started Manchester United per se. Uh, yeah. you, you know, you know, winning the treble, etc. Uh, multiple trophies yeah. back to back. Yeah. Uh, you know, do you see Manchester United coming back anytime soon in terms of possibly the top three? Because uh, the least they have made it, or the most they have made it, is maybe the top five, top four. That's it. Top yeah. Six. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do Do you see them in the top three in the near future? You know, I definitely concur with what you're saying. It hasn't been the same for Manchester United since um, the special one, uh, since the king himself, and who of course, actually I'm, I'm started Man Alex United. Fer- I'm, I'm referring to Alex Ferguson yes, when I say Sir the king, Alex of course. Alex Ferguson indeed. right there, you know. Indeed. I mean, that time, Man United was really on was really on a high, you know, when it was the Manchester Derby, you you would know that, you know, they would go pound for pound, you know, it was a real, it was a real derby at that time, you know, but so things haven't been the same ever since, and, you know, um, what I do know is that they've brought in a new technical team to, uh, you know, adjust here and there. So um, with this season coming up, I wouldn't say I see them in the top three in the season, perhaps in the top five. But in the near future, hopefully they can actually uh, fix their ways and actually find um, someone as close to the special one or the man himself, Sir Alex Ferguson. Yeah. Um the thing is, I I was actually saying to someone earlier, you know, I was I was having a a a, a, a um a friend of mine, and yeah. one of the things that I've said to him was top guns, for example, like David Beckham, um, yeah, you know. A previous coach that 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 coached Manchester United, he was on he was also yeah. under the wings of Alex Ferguson. Uh, um, Definitely. Um, other top players, you know. Yeah. Manchester United was 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 a force to be reckoned with. Um, maybe yeah. twenty twenty five years ago. Man City uh, as well. I mean, Man City still. Con, you know, they they still continue with the dominance that they portray from day one. <clears throat> but yeah, Liverpool, the very same thing. Um, yeah, Chelsea. Uh, I, I mean, right now, I'm seeing Chelsea in a more deeper trouble than Manchester United. Because, for example, last season and the season before, they were not looking like the Chelsea we know. Mm. Most definitely, you know what, um, uh, Chelsea, I, I don't understand, or rather, I do not know what is going on with Chelsea because they really haven't been um, looking their best, they really haven't been playing at their best, you know. Um, something along the line is just not going right. I do not know um, if it be a thing of the players, if it be a thing of a coach or the technical team, you know. But I always say this um, in, in football, if something is not going right, um, it's, it's not just on the field. It literally is not just on, a, on the field. And you cannot always um, put the blame to the players, you know. Um, if something is not going right behind the scenes it reflects on the players it reflects on the game itself it reflects on the team as well you know and they won't give a hundred percent they won't give um everything they've got you know so somewhere somehow something is not um really going well with chelsea and i mean even last season they weren't really at their best the season before that they weren't really doing that well when was the last time you actually saw chelsea um at least in the top five of the epl it's been a while it's been a while exactly it's been a while it definitely has you know so as i'm saying something is just not going right and they need to figure it out really 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 quick because because a team for example like everton they have been dominating chelsea per se in terms of positions and you do not I i mean you know two three four five six seven years ago 
Everton was nowhere to be seen. No way. Literally nowhere to be seen. And now they have actually dominated Chelsea. Exactly. I mean, not only Chelsea, Manchester United, Man City, uh, Liverpool, yeah. all the top guns. And Liverpool, you're, 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 you're exactly. saying to yourself... Newcastle, Pistol Palace, they've literally dominated. You literally okay. dominated. No, so, you, you know... The likes of these small teams are not to be undermined. Exactly. You know, um, they are really not to be undermined. A, a, a team like, I, I always find a team like Brighton. Uh -huh. Brighton has Manchester City's number. Every time City plays against Brighton, you, you don't, you, you never really understand what's going on. City would have the best players on that field. But Brighton will find a way to just outsmart Manchester City. Like, They'll find a way to just actually dominate and, and, and outclass Manchester City all the time. And for a, for a, a quote-unquote underdog team, something is, well, I, I don't, well, it's, it's, well, I, I cannot compare this, uh, Pertaining to the the because 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 Liverpool and Manchester United have been going at it for years, um, the Red Devils, uh, you know, and 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 and, but you cannot compare Manchester City with with with. There was a team. There was a team. I I, I actually feared playing as well, and, and 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 when I say we, I mean Manchester United because this team sprung from nowhere. I'm referring to Hull City. They sprung from nowhere and dominated Manchester City every game they played. I mean, Manchester United every game they played. And I was like, what is the coach not doing? Not saying that he, you know, the team is not playing well or whatever. But there's something yeah. with this specific coach of Hull who happens to... To always have their number exactly I, I definitely get where you're coming from and if i'm saying that like you know uh, these big teams they would have like the best of their players on the field the best 11 on the field but it's just something with these underdogs that just are able to come through and you you don't really understand if you have the likes of um Mo Salah, you have the likes of Erling Haaland, uh, Kyle Walker on the field. You never really understand as to how a team like, you know, an underdog, Brighton, would come and actually beat a team like Man United or exactly. Liverpool exactly. or Man City. Exactly, exactly, exactly my point. And I'm, and I'm saying to myself, and these underdogs are not just defending they're banging in goals they are banging in goals they are banging in goals DJWG. and you know what they they the way they play the 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 game um at that time you can actually see that you know what the passes are magnificent the game that they are playing at that moment in time they literally have like this big big teams literally um, by the line, literally, you get the likes of Man City defending while while you know an underdog team is just coming at them um all the time, and they're just banging in goal after goal after goal. Honestly, and you wonder how a score line between a team like Arsenal and Brighton, um, which favors Brighton at this time, is a three zero kind of a score yeah, line. Because because sometimes sometimes I'm looking at scorecards and I'm like. 3-0. Okay, Arsenal, you've, you've got this. But when I click on the info, I was like, Brighton? I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Am, am, am I seeing something? <laughs> it, it, is, is, you know what I mean? Like, you cannot believe, because you expect, you. because you expect Arsenal to beat a Brighton. You expect a Man City to beat a Hull City. You expect a Manchester United to beat a, 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 a Newcastle. Well, speaking of Newcastle, yeah. they are, they are a force to be reckoned with. They are a force to be reckoned with. I was actually telling my partner, I think it was around last season, when I was looking at the EPL league table and see Newcastle, I think it was within the top eight exactly. of the league. And I'm like, Newcastle is in the top eight? What the hell? And I'm looking at the stats. I'm looking at how many games they've played, how many games they've won. 
President will currently add, and they're sitting comfortably in the sixth position. And I'm like, Newcastle is doing something this season. Newcastle is really just has up to their game. They have pulled up their stuff, and you know what? They are playing football. And I sometimes see, you know, um, it's another team that really has Man City. Um, you know, by the line as well. Sometimes, you know, Newcastle will just literally surprise Man City out of nowhere and literally beat them the likes of 2-1, 3-1 right there, you know. And you wonder as to how a team like Newcastle, being the underdog that it is, coming and actually beating a big team like Manchester City. And I guess, you know, us as fans, you know, we, we, we take these big teams, you know, to be, um, the, you know, the stars of the league. And, you know, people forget that you've got teams like Fulham, you've got teams like Everton, you've got teams like Crystal Palace who are actually a force to be reckoned with and they should not even be taken lightly at all. Yep. Yep. Um, finally, before we, before we end, um, because, you know, and we have we haven't even touched on the on on the Spanish league. We haven't even touched on the on the Bundesliga in in, in Germany. We haven't yeah. touched on half of the leagues around the world. But time, time, time. My final question to you before we we we, we end this segment is: Yeah, I need for you to tell me this. I know I'm going to put you on the spot, uh-huh. even though we haven't gone through the rest of the nice. league. Here we go again. <laughs> but, but, but if you had to, if you had to pick one team from each league, the South African league, the EPL, the the the, the German league, the Spanish league, yeah, one from each top to, mm. to win the league this season, who would it be? Ooh, DJ you putting me on the spot. Um, well, 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 well like, like I always tell anyone who steps into the studio once I'm in the studio is prepare for anything. <laughs> no, definitely. You know, and one thing I've realized over the couple of uh, months that we've worked together right here on Down the Middle, like, you love putting me on the spot. You did the same thing with the Euros. But, okay, to answer your question, um, let me put it like this. Um, let me start with the PSL. PSL. Um, I'll start with the South African Football League. Um, um, I won't be specific in name, but if you know, you know what team I'm talking about. No, no, um, no, 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 no. I didn't ask you that. I asked you to name a team, miss. <laughs> You're not going to get away with this this evening. <laughs> and, and oh, my gosh, okay, you, I'm trying you, to you, and if you, and if you, and if you, the question with everything you, I have. And if you, just not letting and if, me go. And if you, but, okay, and let, if you, let me, and let if me you directly answer the question. And if you don't... Every week that you come in here, I will ask you the same question. So you're gonna be you're gonna be tired of that question. So answer it and get it over. <laughs> All right, uh, for the PSL, I'm going to go with Orlando Pirates. They are I really knew, just I, I, on top I knew, of that I knew game. exactly where you're going. You're going to go, but I wanted you to say it. Okay, okay. There, there. I've said it. I've publicly said it. Say it again. Orlando say Pirates. It again. Say it again. Say it again. I didn't hear you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Jazzy didn't hear you. Jazzy Dexter Smith didn't hear you. Who did you say? <laughs> okay, for the South African Football League to win it for the 2024-2025 season is Orlando Paris. Sierra David didn't hear you. Oh my gosh! No, no, the black <laughs> okay. and white. Okay. It's the black okay. and okay. freaking okay. white. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> the English League. Um. Okay, um, EPL, sure, this is a very tough one, um, on. but I know, uh, the, the citizens aren't really going to give it up just like that, so I'm going to go and give it uh, to the citizens again, okay. Manchester City, okay, um, in the, in the, in the, in the La Liga, oh man, you know, like, for me, there's just one team that's really just dominating at this moment, and they are the... You wait for um, championship uh, title holders right there. Uh, Real Madrid has to be the one to take it this season again. Um, 
Um, in the Bundesliga, Bayern Munich really came up short last season, and they would definitely want to redeem themselves. So I'm definitely going for um Bayern Munich right there. Um, in the French league, uh, we'll definitely go for PSG. They are a force to be reckoned with. Um, they definitely are on on another level. I do not know how they're gonna survive without Mbappe this season. But somehow, well, some way. Well, 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 well. I, I, I was going to ask you a question, but I'd rather leave it for next week. Because you mentioned his back Let there. us leave where it for next week. I was going to ask you, where is he? But um, we'll, we'll tell the listeners about that next week. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So, um, yeah, for uh, the French League, um, definitely, definitely, um, PSG, somehow, some way, they're going to make it happen. So, that's exactly how we do it on that week. It doesn't mean it's the queen. But, but then again, you're the queen's new one. Why are you running from questions? <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, I, you know, sometimes, you know, as an analyst, you don't really want to give your uh, direct opinion. However, at the same time, you do. So, it's just... I guess it's just the balance of how you say it, of how you just um, really give the listeners what they want. All right, then. And on that note, yeah, we wish you well. And, of course, we catch you next week indeed. All right, my friend. Thank you so much, DJ Double G. It was an honor and a pleasure to just be back on Down the Middle. I um, actually enjoyed it so much. And for all the listeners, you can catch me on um, Good Vibes, Good Conversations from Monday to Thursday from 7 all the way until 9 o'clock. Every single Friday on the Wild Way from 8 all the way until 10 o'clock. And every single Saturday from at 9 all the way until 12 o'clock on the Recharge. That's how we catch the wave every Monday to Saturday only on Zollywood Radio, the home. I'm sorry, All righty then. Thank you so much. Thank you. Indeed. Lindelof. Expansive in finding Rashford. Now it's Dallow. And Garnacho! <laughs> Yes, indeed, indeed, indeed. 20 minutes to the top of the hour. And of course, we say thank you so much to Kennedy Babe, Queen of Sport, wherever she is. And I have dug some holes and dug some pits, and we have come up with the man himself. Who are we referring to, people? I'm referring to Mr. Jazzy Daniel Smith. Good afternoon to you, sir. Good afternoon. From my side. I am doing super good on my side. Can't complain. We have a lot. Uh, as you will see, let's, let's begin. Indeed. So, we, we are on the penultimate day of the Olympics. Um, Sunday is the last day of the Olympics. Um, so we are winding down in terms of the whole sporting activities and so forth and so forth. So, um, with that said, um, I think where we can start off is just to have a look at some of the um, stuff which are remaining. And after that, we can get into the whole controversy with um, Noah Niles and his testing positive for COVID. Then we can dive into this whole Algerian boxer who but gold medal but uh, for those who have been following the sports commentary you would know what i'm talking about and then we can start in the whole 
Olympics and how much the athletes are getting paid and all that kind of a drama. And like we said once, you know, you might get it correct, you might not get it right, but um, we'll see. I'm actually. Yeah, in the top 10. Well, let's see how much we can start in within the next uh, hour and so. Alright, so here's what we're going to do. Um, let's start off with the ten, the top ten sports. Um, I'm going to pick and play that, and from there we will we can touch on some of the results from those top ten sports. Um, those that are in the Summer Olympics and anything outstanding. Okay then. So let's do this. Yes, indeed. Let's do this. <laughs> Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the most awesome under the radar sports played at the Summer and Winter Olympics that certainly deserve a lot more attention. He is the Olympic champion for men's individual archery. What a moment for him! Number 10, Rugby Sevens. It's one of those hairs standing up on the back of the neck moments. The Olympic final. A gold medal at stake. There was quite a lengthy hiatus for rugby at the Summer Olympics. Fifteen aside matches were discontinued after the 1924 games. It then took nearly a century, 92 years more precisely, for rugby to make its return at the Rio 2016 Olympic Games. And again it's a Fiji try, and it's Leone Nakarawa. But it wasn't the original setup. Rather, this would mark the start of the discipline known as Rugby Sevens, in which each team trots out seven players for a game involving physicality, endurance, speed, agility, and teamwork. Fiji won the first men's gold medal in the sport, while Australia came out on top for women. World Series champions, and now history makers. The Aussie women, the first team to win gold in Olympic Sevens. For those who dread sitting down for hours to watch a sporting event, Rugby Sevens' fast-paced 14-minute games may be an attractive element. Number 9, Canoe, Slalom and Sprint. Canoeing has been a staple at the Summer Olympic Games since 1936. Both disciplines, Sprint and Slalom, the latter of which joined the party in 1972, are intriguing races along the water that warrant more public attention. Canoe sprint, which takes place on flat water, is the way to go for those looking for sheer speed. This is poetry, this is passion, this is power from the Brazilian. Whereas canoe slalom, which occurs on an artificial white water course, may be preferred by others due to its element of tactical navigation. He now has to paddle with freedom. He's going to have to take some risks. That's because there are 18 to 25 gates through which the athletes must, well, slalom. Either way, when it comes to both canoeing events, what's impressive and potentially appealing for the public is the combination of technique, concentration, and speed. It's unbelievable just how much water is flowing down this course, which is there or thereabouts 400 meters. Number 8. Skeleton. Extreme sliding. That's one way to characterize the electrifying winter sport that is skeleton. Martins do course set the fastest time in practice for this event and build up a push-off speed of 51.3 kilometers per hour on the way to reaching a higher speed of 130.3 kilometers per hour in his ride. It first appeared at the St. Moritz Winter Olympics in 1928, made a brief comeback at the 1948 Games before missing out on the next 13 events. Since its return in 2002, Skeleton has become a consistent winter event. The Russian building a fastest time of over 131 kilometers per hour that being over a second faster than his nearest rival. The sport involves the competitor starting with a sprint before hopping on their sled in plank position, and then zooming headfirst along an ice track. Gravity and kinetic energy are integral factors of skeleton. Also, focus, stillness, and tiny movements of the head, shoulders, and feet to steer are key. Precision is everything here, as races are often won by milliseconds. Beside all that, the cool helmets are a plus. Number 7. Trampoline. The incredible acrobatics involved in trampolining make for a captivating spectacle. She's been very strong through all her tri- twisting parts. The event first appeared at the Olympics in the 2000 Games in Sydney. Men and women alike soar over 25 feet in the air while performing a series of twists, bounces, and somersaults. While the sport has certainly become popular, the elaborate body movements, superb body control, and overall exceptional technique necessary, in addition to the high-flying nature of it, still make it underrated. Here she goes. Looking clean. This is impressive. 
Plus, for many of us who have fun childhood memories of bouncing on a trampoline, these athletes show us all the amazing aerial maneuvers that we ourselves could never do. She is looking strong. There is some travel, but it's not too serious. Good height on the last skill. Number six, table tennis. It can be riveting watching two skilled table tennis players whack a ball back and forth over the net. Table tennis has been a sport at the Summer Olympics since 1988 and has been dominated by China. At the Olympics, the intensity level during an epic rally can be through the roof. The speed, spin, accuracy, and body movements utilized by players is amazing. They, however, have to stand somewhat far away from the table compared to the typical friendly amateur match in your buddy's basement. Sure, most people are familiar with this sport, whether they refer to it as table tennis or ping pong. But the real question is, do they watch it during the Olympics? Well, they should. Number 5. Modern Pentathlon. Fencing, freestyle swimming, equestrian show jumping, pistol shooting, and cross-country running. Yeah, that's five different sports, but they mold into one Olympic event known as Modern Pentathlon. First, athletes had to swim 200 meters. Baron Pierre de Coubertin, founder of the Modern Olympic Games, was fond of the Ancient Games version of the Pentathlon, which consisted of running, jumping, javelin, discus, and wrestling. He wanted to incorporate an updated version that would test a complete athlete, and so he proposed the Modern Pentathlon. Next was Ryan where athletes navigated 15 jumps on horses drawn at random. 1912 marked the first edition of the competition, while a women's event was introduced in 2000. Modern pentathlon doesn't get the public attention it deserves relative to other Olympic sports, particularly given its lengthy history and the way it tests athletes' versatility. Four shooting stations were spread throughout the 3.2-kilometer run. Number four, archery. Focus, precision, and consistency are vital in archery, a sport that debuted at the Olympics in Paris in 1900. South Korea has dominated the category, winning 13 more gold medals and 10 more total medals than the second most successful nation. If An San can finish this off with a perfect set, then the Dutch, well, you just have to say you're beaten by the better side. Taking into account the size of the targets and the distance from which the archers shoot their arrows, this unique competition is pretty awesome. Targets measure 122 centimeters in diameter, and archers stand 70 meters or about 230 feet away. Can you believe how far that is? The gold medal! Is it heading to Korea? It is! It's an eight! So next time you watch Olympic competitors launch arrows through the summer sky, remember the extraordinary concentration it takes to hit those distant bullseyes. If this 22-year-old from Turkey scores a 10, he is the Olympic champion. Number three, artistic swimming. Once known as water ballet, this sport now commonly goes by artistic or synchronized swimming. At the Olympics, the event is presented as both duet and team competitions. The pool-based sports require water aerobics, flexibility, attention to detail, choreography, and synchronization among teammates. All of this along with the incorporation of music results in an unparalleled spectacle. Artistic swimming first made its way to the Olympics in 1984 and has provided numerous entertaining moments since. Obviously, the athletes compete for the highest scoring routines, but for viewers, the unique artistry of the sport allows it to be interpreted not only as a competition, but as a performance or show as well. Number two, badminton. Hitting the birdie back and forth over the net is considered a fun, casual outdoor activity by many. But there's nothing casual about Olympic badminton. These athletes engage in intense, fast-paced rallies and that demand ultra-quick reflexes, sharp decision-making, and superb hand-eye coordination. Badminton became an official event at the 1992 Summer Games in Barcelona. The competition includes single and double events for men and women separately, as well as mixed double events. Matches are best of three series with each individual game played to at least 21 points. This racket sport is wildly popular, especially in Asia. Yet it's a bit of an unsung hero at the Olympics. Its skillful and entertaining nature definitely warrants a much larger global audience.
Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Handball Although it first appeared at the Berlin Olympics in 1936, handball wouldn't become a mainstay at the Games until 1972. It's a fairly popular team sport in Europe, but hasn't caught on nearly as much in other places, such as the U.S. According to the International Olympic Committee, handball sits in the fourth out of six tiers of popularity among summer Olympic sports. That takes into account TV viewership, internet popularity, public surveys, ticket requests, press coverage, and the number of national federations. Swap back to his right hand again. There he goes, right, and then uh, swap again. Clearly, handball doesn't draw quite the same attention as some other Olympic sports, but it should. The sport, which requires teamwork, strategic positioning, throwing accuracy, deception, and agility, among other qualities, is certainly worth a watch. Let us know in the comments which of these Olympic sports you're most interested in watching. When you see it in real time, it, was, you know, it looks pretty much perfect, doesn't it? It was very good indeed. <laughs> Really? If it's not DJ Double G, I'm not interested. In the mix. More hits, more music, more Zollywood Radio. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, I think a lot of us have done trampoline. But, you know, we look at Olympic sports and we're like, yeah, I can do that. But in actuality, really, can you really do it? Because it looks so simple on paper, but it's not. Would you like to do it? I, I would like to do it, my friend. I think we have to get already in our past as, a, as little children. If, if, if I've if, never gone in a trampoline, so, yeah. Well, you never have, okay, well, yeah, well, that's something that you would need to try, my friend, but, um, generally, I guess you have that. Yeah, if you went to Pizza Pizza and any of those places and see a trampoline, yeah, you'll get the points. It's something that many people have tried in some formats. And what about, but it's, what about handball? It's handball, yeah, that's a different thing I would like to try. The games. Oh, Lord. So. Yeah, so as we, as I mentioned, I said we can always have a look at a few of the sports that we have not touched um, for this Olympic cycle as yet. One of the sports that we mentioned is artistic swimming. Um, so the um, last medals should be given out today um, at the end of the day. Right. And so, so far, in terms of the whole competition schedule, um, obviously we are almost done with it. Um, but so far, um, China has one goal, and the, well, the United States has gotten the silver, and Spain has gotten the bronze. In the whole artistic swimming, right? In terms of the individuals, um, so the only thing that's missing is the the duet. That's the only thing that has not taken place as yet. Yeah, hopefully, and, uh, ho ho hopefully tomorrow or so we can give a comprehensive roundup as regards to this specific sport event. 
um, so yeah. we have one more day to go. Yeah, we have, well, one more day to go. Another sport that was mentioned is badminton, and I, even though it was mentioned, I think people still have no idea what the hell is that kind of a sport. Neither do I. Right. Um, and I don't even know how to classify it because you see the thing is this: um, the ball. If people say a ball, but the ball is I wouldn't say it's not round, but it's it it's not the average ball that you would normally see. Let's just put it that way. Right. So. I wonder if we can find a picture of a badminton ball and post it on our channel. Yeah, we definitely can find it. That's not a problem. For persons to, to see what the ball actually looks like. Yeah, but it's it's. I if I if I, if I have to put it in 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 short, imagine a ball, a small ball, and at the center point of it, you know. It has feathers coming out of it, like like a little skirt. That's how the ball looks like. Okay, a feathery ball. Okay. Well, it's not a feathery ball. It's a, it's a ball with a skirt. Okay. <laughs> That's the easiest way to put it. It's a ball with a skirt. Okay. I've never seen a ball with a skirt, but okay then. I've seen a woman. I, I've seen women in, in beautiful skirts. But, uh, Okay. Yeah. Um, so let's take, let's take a script, my friend, put it along the second plants of a ball, and yeah, you got it. You got a badminton. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, um, in terms of the whole med medal summary, um, so far, um, China um leads the medal counts with two gold, three silver. Um, followed by South Korea with one gold, one silver. Um, Chinese Taipei has one gold. Denmark one gold has one one gold as well. And then Thailand has a silver. Japan has two bronze. Um, Malaysia has two bronze. And last but not least, Indonesia um, has a bronze. Right? And all all of the all of the um, sporting disciplines have already been put in the men's singles, the men's doubles, the women's singles, women's doubles, and mixed doubles. So that's pretty much pretty much done and understood. Um, let me go into another sport. Um, it wasn't mentioned, um, but many people, if I see a question, a lot of people will go like, huh, 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 what, 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 what the hell is that? A question. It's a sport. That requires horses and people. Oh, you mean the horses <laughs> jumping over hurdles like a like like human beings? Yes. yes, yes, yes. I, I like it's I said off air, I would not want to be on a horse that flies over hurdles without wings. Yeah. So yeah, it's called a question. That's what it's called. That's the name of this. That's the name of the whole stuff. And then there have been different. Um, formats over the years, um, in terms of how it's played. But um, before I go there, I will just say this: there are some sports. Um, if you were to look at who plays them, and and so forth, you realize those sports are more of an elite sports. Yeah. A question, a question is one of them. Oh. Yeah. And if you look at some of the people who have won Olympic goals, you realize there are you you probably find a lot of royalty in your Christians who have actually won. Or, yeah, those kind of people. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a kind of a elite sport. Anyway, they might have. 
But so far, um, we have Germany, um, um, half top of the table with four gold and one silver. Um, Great Britain, two goals. Um, three brown. We got France with a silver and bronze. Australia with a silver. Denmark with a silver. Switzerland with a silver. United States, one silver. Japan, one bronze. And the Netherlands, one bronze. And if you realize, the majority of the sports that have been countries that I've mentioned, there is actually some monarchy there. But anyway, you get a point. Okay. And so the, just to give you a go about the different events, you have the individual dressing or, or the or party or, or dressing. We have team, the trim dress dressing, um, individu individual eventing, um, team eventing. All right, so another sport that was mentioned, but again, we don't know too much about is handball. So we have uh, women and men, some and men, as always. Um, in so the middle summary, um, we have Norway uh, with one goal. We have France coming off with the silver, and we have Denmark coming off with the bronze, and that's in the. Uh, in the medals table rankings for the for the men. And then for the uh, I don't know. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's give me one second and let me just get something there. So, in the um, police, in the we have a preliminary group. Um, we have a group A and the group B. Uh, we have six teams in each group, and the top four advancing. So, in group one, we have Germany, Slovenia, Spain, Sweden. Croatia and Japan. Um, Croatia and Japan did not make it into the other round. And in B, we have Germany, Egypt, Norway, France, Hungary, Argentina. And Hungary and Argentina did not make it. And then, is that, after you go through. Is that, is that coincidental? Well, I'm not too sure because I don't know too much about the handball. Uh, is that coincidental with you? Because the two groups you mentioned, you mentioned two, la two last teams, and coincidentally, those two sets of last teams did not make it. Well, I give I give it to you in order of the rankings. <laughs> so yeah, in that case, we yeah, not too much coincidence, eh? All right, and then after you go through um, the whole series and so forth, we had um, um, France playing um, Germany. Uh, France playing Germany. Um, Germany went through, and Spain against Egypt. Spain going through. Morocco was in Slovenia. Slovenia went through. Denmark against Sweden. Denmark advanced, and then. You have Germany and Denmark in for the gold and silver, and we have Spain and so we are in for the bronze. Um, Germany, um, Germany advanced. Uh, so that that means and, and so forth. So those two matches will be playing 
should be finishing today. So we should have the um, total points for those two teams um, by the next um, sports broadcast. Right, and then on the women's side, um, which has been completed already, right, um, we have Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Germany, South Korea and Slovenia um, in the first group. Again, South Korea and Slovenia didn't make it. And then we had France, Netherlands, Hungary, Brazil, Angola and Spain. Angola and Spain didn't. And then we went through the knockout. We had Norway against Brazil. We had Denmark against the Netherlands. We had Hungary against the Swedish. And we had France against Germany. And right, so Norway went through in the match between um, Norway and Brazil. We had Denmark advancing against the Netherlands. We had Sweden advancing against Hungary, and we had France advancing against Germany. And then we went into the knockout. Um, we had. Um, Norway and France played for gold and silver. Norway um, took home the gold. France took home the silver. And then between Denmark and Spain for the bronze, we had Denmark taking the bronze. And Sweden was left without, without a medal. So that's... that's that's where we back where we we, we were. Uh, I'll touch on one more spot. Uh, remember, I mentioned um the whole water in the Saint River and so forth, and how how you know half it will the match have to be postponed, um, half it will fall in sea, and so on and so forth. Right? We still have some matches or uh, some events to still taking place. I think most of them were completed, if not all. Um, but kind of different. So, we have Great Britain um, leading the table with one goal and two wrongs. We have France, one goal and one wrongs. We have Germany, one goal, one no third wrongs. So, there's one medal. Um, we have New Zealand with a silver. You have Sweden with a silver and the United States with the silver uh, medal. Um, in the different events that we had, we had the men's individual, we had the women's individual, mixed freely, and those will be events that will take in place. So, that's basically it for my um major um sports round. So I think we have generally covered most of the Olympic sports. Um taking case um over the past two and two weeks and some days. So I, um, the next sports report, I should be able to tie off um, the remaining matches still uh, and any other outstanding um, events. So I think we can take a break and then we can have a few discussion as to, you know, some events happening during the Olympics, which we have touched about, but we're going to go into a little bit more in detail. So, Adam. Jeff Brown. Jeff. Uh -huh. Okay, I'll break my brother.
it is now 17 minutes after the hour. More hits, more music, more Zollywood Radio. Hey, listen, this is new hit music non stop. Every day, every night, non stop. Zollywood Radio. This is Zollywood Radio. You are listening to DJ Double G Double G Double G. <laughs> you are listening to DJ Double G Double G. Bang 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 bang. bang DJ bang, 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 Double G. Bang, 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 bang. More hits. More music, more Zollywood Radio. Hey, listen, this is new hit music non stop every day, every night, non stop. Zollywood Radio. This is Zollywood Radio. Just the other night, I saw a fit and very healthy Noah Lyles run a new personal record time of 9.81 seconds at this year's Diamond League meeting in London, taking down a world-class field and winning his final race before this year's Paris Olympic Games. Yeah, but Lyles is going to take it, and he runs 9.80, and that is the third fastest time in the world this year. It's the season's best for Lyles. This race was more than just a win. It was a statement. Against last year's silver medalist Letsili Tabogo, the British record holder Zarnell Hughes, the South African legend Akani Simbine, and the rising star from Great Britain, Louis Hinchliffe, Lyle separated easily from this field, and he left everyone wilting in his wake. At 9.81 seconds, this performance was nothing short of excellence, and to do it into a headwind was but another reason to find what Lyles did so amazing. During this race, Lyle split a 60 meter interval time of 6.47, and for his final 40, he ran an estimated time of 3.34 seconds, one of the fastest closes over the final 40 meters in sprinting history. When Lyles is on, there is no denying that he is just on, and there are very few people that can keep up with him over the final meters. And even though 3.34 is one of the quickest closes that we have seen over the past decade or so, you know who ran slightly faster? It was Usain Bolt of Jamaica. Back in 2009, Bolt's speed was absolutely goaded, and it was unmatched, and during that year's world championships, he ran a new world record in 9.58, and he broke this world record by more than a tenth of a second. It's Bolt all the way, he's looking round at Gay, watch the clock, it's gold for Bolt, and again, he's done it again! This race was about as close to perfection as you could ever even imagine, and when we take a closer look, we can see just how he did this. Through 60 meters, Bolt turned on God Mode and achieved a time of approximately 6.29, which was already an insane start for a man that stands at 6 feet and 5 inches. But then for his final 40 meters, he ran a time of 3.29, still to this day the only close in under 3.3. Clearly, Bolt's abilities at this point in his career were absolutely unchallenged, and ever since his departure from the track world in 2017, the sprinting scene, and especially the Jamaican contingent, has desperately been waiting for the next big name. And with this in mind, there has been an athlete exponentially growing with hype, hailing from Jamaica, and this man's name is Keyshane Thompson, the athlete that many people have as their gold medal pick for this year's Olympics. Now, unlike Noah Lyles, Keyshane will be entering this year's Olympics with no international experience to his name. He's never been to the Olympic Games, he's never been to the World Championships. But rest assured, he is aiming for nothing short of a gold medal. Over the past two or three days, the buzz around this one Jamaican has absolutely exploded. And just yesterday, he finally graced the practice track in Paris for the first time. And because of this one appearance, people have honestly been losing their minds. There's just something about his presence that demands your attention. He's cool, he's collected, and he explodes out of the blocks. And according to his coach, he is not to be affected by the mind games of any other athlete on the track. He is in a position that gives him complete clarity moving into the finals. 
For some people, a lack of racing is a huge disadvantage. You've lost some experience points, while others seem to be gaining more and more momentum via racing. But for Kishane, who has only raced four total times this year, his lack of running somehow appears to be a positive. Whenever he has run, he has looked absolutely incredible. And even for his 9.77 PR this season, which he ran in the Jamaican Olympic Trials, he achieved this mark while letting off the gas. The current expectation for this race is that we will see something historically fast. And with Keyshane and Noah squaring off come the finals, there is a very real chance that we could see something faster than 977. But no matter what the conditions or times bring during the finals, this race is guaranteed to be a 100 meter dash to remember. Now just a few hours ago, we posted a poll asking all of you who you think will win in the men's 100 for the Olympic finals. And here are the current results after just a few hours. As you can see, Lyles and Thompson are the overwhelming favorites, with Lyles currently standing above Kishane by a pretty big margin. Now, I consider all of you watching right now and all of you who voted the single most intelligent and legendary group of track fans in the world, so I take your opinions very seriously. And while Kishane and Noah do deserve a huge chunk of this vote, there is something else very interesting happening with this poll right now that two other track greats disagree with. Beyond Kishane and Noah, we do have many people voting for Seville, Omanyala, and Fred Curley. And I would have put more athletes on here, but the poll only allows for five total options. So apologies to Tobogo and Akane Sambine. But these three are also incredibly fast. And according to Usain Bolt and Rodney Green from Ready, Set, Go, they have Oblique Seville coming out on top. So far in 2024, Oblique is the only athlete that has taken down Noah Lyles in the 100, as he beat him by 0.03 seconds in this year's Racers Grand Prix, running a time of 9.82 seconds. And for Bolt, who has also trained under Seville's coach, Glenn Mills, he is the man to beat right now. Now, obviously all of you voted different, and I fully respect what has been voted for so far. But let's take a look at some of the finer details that all of you left in this post. According to Late Night Finds 4, Curly is underrated. He is an animal and he comes through when it matters. User ZY3 wrote Marcel Jacobs. James Cody Jones wrote Curly and 956. I am safely assuming that this man is trolling. And for a more introspective look into this race, Matty S6106 wrote, I want the winner to be Key Shane because Lyles does not have a sub 977 in his capabilities this season. So if Kishane loses, it means he underperformed. I want each athlete to run their fastest race, and under those conditions, Kishane can run sub-977, maybe 7-3 or 4. If Lyles does win, I would want to see Kishane run 973 or 4, coming second to Lyles or someone else who ran the race of their life, getting close to 9.70. I would hate to see an underwhelming final where 980 or slower wins it. If 98 does win it, I don't care who crosses the line. Now, there is a lot to unpack with this comment. In fact, I'm not even going to attempt to unpack all of it. But specifically referencing Lyles' inability to run faster than 977 this season, I am not too sure about this statement here. Historically, Lyles only gets faster and faster as we get closer to the global finals. And given his 9.81, which again he did achieve into a headwind, he is looking very dangerous and a 977 does seem to be in his wheelhouse. Now, make sure to leave all of your thoughts in the comment section down below so we can have a debate on who is the favorite and who will come out on top, because I have read some of your comments and they are some of the best and most detailed breakdowns of this men's 100. But for now, let's just hope for a fair race and let's all hope the athletes bring their A-game. Now, again, I want to hear from all of you. Who do you think will win this men's 100? Who do you think is the favorite? And what time do you think will be needed to win this year's Olympic Finals? Thanks for watching, everyone. And as always, until next time. Yes, sir. Yes, indeed. Something actually struck me within that. And of course, I'm going to start with that. <laughs> no worries, no worries. We know. Kishane Thompson, who happens to be the fastest man this year, clocking 977, happens to be coached by Usain Bolt's previous coach. 
who happens to be uh-huh. Glenn Mills. Uh-huh. Are you telling me by this clip that Oblique Seville, the Excalibur athlete who dominated tracks in his A day, is also coached by the king? Well, um, I think um, Mills has a lot, has produced a lot of athletes, so <laughs> as you can see. Yeah. So yeah, of course. Um, Johan Blake, for example, Warren Ware. So, so he has he, he has proven to be a very um, phenomenal coach in getting the speed necessary to be. A contender for gold, silver, bronze in them. I mean, I mean, kudos to, 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 you know, um, you know, Spring Tech or, or, you know, coached by Bruce James, etc. Or, 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 um, you know, uh, the previous coached, you know, the previous coach who coached Shelley and Fraser Price, uh, Stephen Francis and his brother, um, you know, Mm-hmm. Kudos to, to to those coaches, but no one can come. No one can be compared to the king. No, no one can be compared to him. And if he pulled the fastest man in history out of the hat, then of course he is the king. Uh, he he has he has produced some very fast and very talented athletes. And we have seen their capabilities over the last what four Olympics, four or five Olympics. Yes, indeed. So that makes that makes that makes his um, skills and talents far far beyond yes. the average. Two. But um, there is a lot. There is a lot to unpack in this whole video. That was just one of them. Um, <sighs> it was a final that all of us who um, anticipated for. We were glued to our TV, we were glued to our phones, we were eager for this thing. And as you realize in the ending, the guy said, you know, if anybody comes from the 9.8, I really don't care who crossed the line. And that's pretty much what happened, eh? Nine point seven nine. That's pretty much what pretty much what happened. Two hundredths of a second, eh? Well, one hundred of a second, my friend. Exactly. So. <laughs> yes. Indeed. That's pretty much, and I guess, I guess. We so don't care who came across because both of them came in at the same at the same time at nine point seven nine. You know, just one body torso was more over than the other. Which is one, one which, two or one torso, whichever one works. Whichever one works, you know, and that has been a debate that has been going around the circles. And trust um, me, trust me, this will be a debate for the next two or three Olympics to come. Right. Um, should we give it to the guy who has the torso, or should we give it as the guy who has the leg? It's like, or, it's like, it's like in cricket. Did the did the did the toe touch the line, or it went over the line? Or did yeah, the, that kind of <laughs> that kind of that kind. Forget about the back for a second. Did 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 was his foot on the line or beyond the line? Yeah. I guess I guess we need to go for uh, 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 um, either a VAR in, uh, from football, or we need to go for a DRS. <laughs> what's um, you, sir? What's you mean, my friend? Uh, um, you 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 never know. Some, you know, sometimes you don't know what what are the rules of certain events until you know certain things like that happen. Where we had a one of the closest finishes in Olympic record history, and when it now come down to the body parts, 
we are now asking which one part should be given a priority. Now, if you were to ask me, I probably will say, guys, if the guy's leg is over the thing, my friend, give it, give it, give it to him. Yeah, the, the, guy, the guy speaks was over the, over the line. Give it to him, my friend. What, what do you want? So, if my, if, if, if majority of my leg is over the line, but my body ain't touch the line yet, my torso ain't cross that line yet. Whatever I don't, is, I guess, is, I my guess. body has already reached over before anything else. You understand? So if it was me, so, 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 so because, to... because, 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 what's, you, you, guess what would happen? Guess what you will now see what happening right now? You will see after that you should dive over the line instead of running over the line. Exactly. And of because course, that, can... would be, that would be some kind, of, and I'm sure if that happens, it will be some kind of controversy again. Why did he dive over the line? Why did she dive over the line when she's supposed to be running through the line? And, Ooh. Because the thing is, my friend, if 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 I if I, if I am in second or third place, my friend, and I realize that my legs can't take me there, why not throw my body over the line if I can? Exactly. If my legs can get me, some part of my body will. <laughs> so 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 so, a big truck car going over a, a a speed bump. What goes over first? The front, right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So once, once, yeah. once there is a simple margin of my toe going over the line, give it, <laughs> give it to me, my friend. But, 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 but if, but if you, if you don't agree with that, then I say, guys, just give up for the gold medal. Come on, guys, yeah. really. What a good if you have a problem deciding who comes first, who came, who or who came first, who came second, hand both the goals. Give both of them a gold medal. No problem. You've seen it in other sporting events, so why can't you do it in track and field? Exactly. Just give me, just give both of them the goal. Give both of them the goal. Let this thing. Anyways, I'm yes. sure if. Like I said, this will be a talk of the town for the next two or three Olympics to come. Especially if we have more tight races like this. Exactly. What happens? What happens if 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 if, if we have two and three tight races in in one Olympics? What are you going to do? Are you going to are you going to pull the same cat out of the hat? Nah, uh, yeah, the torso give it, get with the guy who has the torsos. Well, I can put this down to torso versus toe. Or toe versus toe. T versus T. Whatever, whichever one works. But well, well, once it's not T and T, but it's okay. I'm not talking about training that the big one. So. The big one or the small, the the three that or the, the two big one. Which which was which was which, which one was came first? <laughs> Indeed, on that note. Yeah, but um, going deeper into this whole thing, um, I guess I'm a bit confused. I I I realize that, and I could be wrong, but there is a tendency. Well, for Noah life to be a little bit more, he has a bravado, he has a level of complacency about him. So even though he won it by the torso, I think, you know, in his whole thing, he'd be like, yeah, boy, I am ready for that 200 race. And yes, I'm going to, I'm going to have them. I'm, to have mm -hmm. you see, I'm the next you see both to have the double in one Olympics. In one day. <laughs> Well, I think we would say, was he so wrong, eh? Was he so wrong? So much so that he didn't even come second. He came first. And what, in, in what would, and what, what would be called the strongest race? So, so, because so, 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 so let me ask you a question. Know, let me ask you a question before you go there. Uh -huh. It is said that lightning does not 
or lightning strikes or does not strike in the same place at the same time or at the same place at the same time. We saw that with Usain Bolt in 2008, 100-200 record, 19.19 respectively and 19.19 and 9.58 respectively. Noah Lyles pulled off the 100 meter by the skin of his torso or toe. And he tried to do the very same thing with the 200 meter under a medical report. Which we're going to get there in a while. Right? So, you know, you see, like you said, lightning doesn't strike twice in the same place. Unless you listen in bolts, then we understand because. I guess you make your own your own lighting because you have your surname is Bolt, right? Yes, yes. Ex exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if you if you if your name is Bolt, then you don't have to worry about lighting striking twice because you make your own lighting. But if you're not using bolts, you know there should be there should be a limit, and you know you as a you as an athlete and individual should know you know your limits you know most people will say that and i think Noah lies probably would attest to it but the 200 meters is Noah lies race not the 100 the 100 is not he has a stronger he has a stronger performance in the 200 race right so again i guess that 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 still that's still well the confidence you know but you know in the end he's america he's american frank him second and then to 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 bago or to bogo i'm sorry for butchering your name my brother from Botswana um came in first very much unexpected you know you know and uh, listening to one commentary which i sent you and we we'll probably play at some point in time um but you know i'm thinking that you know no allies um is supposed to pick which of the strongest race is not a young chap the next olympics he'll be 31 right the bodies are getting young the bodies are getting young so pick a race commit to it and go out and do your best if you are man enough and still want to do two races this is what's going to what happened this olympics will more than likely repeat itself at another Olympics, right? It's, you're not getting younger, like I said. And at the end of the day, it is claimed that the 200 is your best race. And if it's your best race, my friend, then ensure that you have a medal to show that it is your best race because since it is your best race and I have no medals to prove. Well, 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 he has a medal, but not the one he was expecting. Well, you know what I mean. He needs the gold medal to prove that you are the king. That's your petty the king. Your, that, that's your petty event. Show that it is your petty event. Exactly. So, Shalian Fraser Price, for example. If you if uh, if, of, if, of, if, of, if you if you if, if you realize, my friend, not to cut your thoughts, that Kitchen Thompson won the one hundred, but he didn't want the two hundred, and you expected him to run the two hundred. Exactly. Why? Because he knows what he is capable of in one compared to the other. So, pick what, pick what, pick, pick what you need and, 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 and stay true to it. Exactly. 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 So, I don't understand why, you know, why persons just feel like you know of course i am doing the two 100 and 200 but which am i more stronger in one or two if i'm stronger in this one focus more on this one you understand and that's what i would say so if you know if you do not know if, if you Unless, like I said, you're bold or you're probably a Julian Alfred, which is still young, you know, I guess. Pick a race that you, pick a race that you can put it in, and then, and then stick to it. 
you I, 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 I knew that was coming you would not or will not end the show without actually mentioning Julian Alfred at least once before the show is done well you know I have to eh? you know I, I definitely have to of course congratulations to her of course uh, for doing up uh, of course uh, uh, St. Lucia, uh, one of the greatest thing in the world, of course, by putting them in the history book of the Olympics, indeed. And it was uh, not once, but twice, you know, gold in the 100, silver in the 200. And you know exactly she was not... You know exactly what would be crazy. And... And she was not too far off from having the triple, you know, because she was this under 60 meter um, champion, breaking then seven, the seven second mark, mark off, becoming the first um, NAWC person to break the seven second mark to be women's, right? When she had a hundred. So if she had gotten the 200 in gold, she would have had the triple in terms of events. And then. For the next 20 years, you will be celebrating non-stop. <laughs> well, I guarantee. And she's, well, she's, she's, she's in her young 20s. So, you know, in her old, early 20s. So she yeah. still has yeah. a bit more well, she, in her time. She's, she's 23. She has at least you know, two Olympics under her belt still. Oh, possibly three. <laughs> Yeah, possibly three. She has two. She, uh, she has um Los Angeles and Australia, and uh, you know to replicate that, 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 the. That is if Australia decides. Well, well, we'll see about that one. We'll see if Australia decides. You know, well, we are going to because again, the Commonwealth, the Commonwealth, they have to pass it on. You know, they couldn't take it on, and we're still now looking for somebody to host the venue, right? And, 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 and based on what we spoke, I think we mentioned this, I think it was last week, um, that Australia is the host for the 2030 Olympics. Mm-hmm. And we're not sure of exactly how that will go as it regards to the governing, the governing body. Um, so... <laughs> I don't know, um, because I think what uh, next year they're supposed to be doing the the championships, and then twenty thirty, there there they will be the host of the Olympics. And well, the, com- the common well, the Commonwealth is supposed to be twenty twenty six. The Commonwealth is twenty twenty six. Twenty twenty six, and of course, yeah, but again, but you will need somebody to be officially given it so that they can prepare for twenty twenty six. So, <laughs> well, it's 2024. So, well, and so far nobody has nobody has raised their hands, and if nobody is raising their hands now, I will now have to ask yourself when will somebody raise their hands? Because if it if it, if it was an exciting, you see, I guess we'll get we'll get into that part later on. But if it was an exciting thing to host, you know, when somebody pull out. Everybody should be raising their hands. I want to host. I want to host. I want to host. Exactly. But you don't see that. You don't see that. Exactly. You know, put the, 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 the organizers and the, and the, and the, 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 the various uh, heads of departments under pressure. Oh, no. We can. We, we will let this one. Or, oh, no. We will let this one. You know what I mean? But no one yes. is, 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 is pushing to say, well, you know, I'm going to do this. Nobody cares. Yeah, nobody really cares, so if, and that's so, why. So, so, so it's a case where if you don't, if if it's not given to someone, then who cares? And that is why the Olympics, when they had the bid between the the Paris bid, when they realized there was not too many people buying for that, they gave Paris this year's Olympics and the runner off, which was Los Angeles, they gave it for twenty twenty. <laughs> <laughs> because they didn't want it, they didn't want it, uh, the, 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 it to it to happen. But you know what? Ah, Jamana. 
you know, you don't have to be looking for some people to raise their hands. So, you know what? Give the second place the next the Olympics. So, 2024 is France, 2028 is Los Angeles, and 2032, we'll give it to Australia. Okay, all right. Something like that. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. No, you, you see what I mean? Like, a lot more persons or a lot more countries put their hands up to host the Olympics. But nobody really wants to host the Commonwealth Games. Why? We all know exactly. All the, all the, all the, all the, all the, all the, nobody wants to host the Commonwealth Games or the Olympics because they're both expensive. True, yeah, just move. true. But, but a lot more countries put their hands up in terms of the Olympics, though. Why? Because that's the that's the move that. Well, I wouldn't. Well, say, of course. It well, would be. I will. I will say this: if you have a look at the last twenty years, the amount of people vying to host Olympics have gone down. And as I tell you, in this last one, we gave the second runner up, twenty twenty eight, which is Los Angeles. And before before we before we get there, um. We, there is something to, uh, for us as Caribbean countries to be excited for. It happened in the common, the last Commonwealth game, um, where cricket made it to the Commonwealth as a sport. And in Los Angeles in 2028, we will be having cricket in its return. I didn't say debut. I said return to the Olympics as an Olympic sport. Well, 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 I mean, if football is a part of the Olympics, why can't cricket? Exactly. And now that we have 2020, so there is no excuse. So? There is no excuse. So, yeah, for, for our Caribbean people, um, we have got something to look forward to next year. Um, I do not know whether we will, I did, the only thing is this, I do not know whether it's going to be played as a, West Indies or as individual countries. I have no idea how that's going to work out, but I guess we will see as we get closer. Um, I don't know. I do not have Well, when that time comes, yes, we shall, we shall see how the composition of the team or because when I look at the Commonwealth, um, when I look, when I, when I look at it, Barbados, um, I think, played in, the, in, that, in that match. It was Barbados who played. Okay. Yeah, but we can, we can always get there to it as to how, what's going to be the qualifying, uh, how is going to be, how nations are going to be qualified to play the Olympics for cricket. Oh. And whether, or whether it's just the 2020 or they will fully have a one league component to it. I don't know. I don't know how they're going to do it. But we shall see. And when that time comes, we will see in 2028. Well, I guess we will know before 2028 because, you know, they will be preparing themselves. And again, guys, um, for, for, those who have a, for, for those who haven't made the connection that cricket is going back to the United States in 2028 because actually the, the World Cup, the, the 2020 World Cup, was hosted by the Caribbean slash the U.S. Just saying. We have three major stadiums in the U.S. And this time we are going to Los Angeles. And Los Angeles is not... Um, it's, it's, it's more to the west of the United States. That's where California and so on and so forth is. But anyway, we, we shall get there. We shall get there. So the spot is... The spot is growing and the spot is booming. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. <laughs> so, we have uh, some eight minutes to go. Mm -hmm. What say you? I think. Um, I think we can uh, um round off. Um, I think the next time we will we will do um next Saturday. Um, we will touch on the various sports that are remaining, have an overview of the Olympics, the good, the bad, the ugly. Are you, are you, are you rate 
France's third time hosting the Olympics because they have hosted twice before in terms of the summer. They have hosted three summer Olympics, they have hosted three winter Olympics, and it's supposed to hold another winter Olympics, I think, in 2030. So that'll be there for winter. But yeah, France have been hosting Olympics on a reg very, I will not say regular, but they have hosted many times to count. I just think France is the, is the most hosting nation as it regards to the Olympics. And it doesn't really matter which one it is. Once it's the Olympics, and all Olympics spell the very same way, I just yeah. think France is leading in that department. Um, I think we are, actually, eh? Yeah. So. I think we are. With that right said, then, so, we, we, shall, we shall get, we shall get, um, two parts and a few other things in our next Saturday. So, with that said, listeners, I will say to you that um, it has been a pleasure working uh, with y'all, and of course, um, you know, at the end of the day, they say, all good things come all good all good things must come to an end eh? so so until next you hear jazzy's voice he says goodbye and next when you hear my voice of course it will be tomorrow evening for uh, the oldies but goodies party from 6 to 9 p.m. JA, 7 to 10 Eastern Standard, and 1 to 4 a.m. South Africa. Well, goodbye for now. <laughs>